we're going to take a look at exercise 2.2.9, which can be found on page 71. Suppose you have a sequence xn, which is never equal to a specific value x. Also, there is a given L, a real number less than 1, so that L is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the ratio xn plus 1 minus x over xn plus x. Show that the original sequence converges to x. So what we're given is not just that the limit of this absolute value of ratio exists, but it is a limit which is less than 1. And I've picked this example not because it's extraordinarily difficult, but because there's a very subtle error that is very commonly made, and I just want to point it out. So we're going to rely on a prior result here. Specifically, lemma 2.2.12, the ratio test for sequences. Now compared to the original way it's written, I've changed x's to y's so we don't confuse it with the sequence xn from the beginning of the problem. Suppose you have a sequence yn, which is never zero, and the limit of the absolute value of the ratio yn plus one over yn exists. If that limit is less than one, then the original sequence without any absolute values involved must converge to zero. If this limit is bigger than 1, then the original sequence is unbounded and therefore doesn't converge. Also, if the limit equals 1, this test simply gives you no information. It may or may not converge the sequence yn. So how are we going to use that result? We're specifically going to let yn be the difference xn minus x. We were given xn is never equal to x, which means yn is never equal to 0. Good, that was one of the requirements for applying this ratio test for sequences. Also, we were given that the absolute value xn plus 1 minus x over xn minus x has limit L, which is less than 1. In other words, the limit of the absolute value yn plus 1 over yn exists and is less than 1. So based on the ratio test for sequences, we can exactly conclude that since this limit exists and is less than 1, the sequence yn converges to 0, but yn was exactly xn minus x. So the limit as n approaches infinity of xn minus x is 0 based on the ratio test for sequences. Okay, all well and good so far. Now we want to carefully finish this problem. We know that this limit is 0. We wish to show that the limit of xn is x. Now a very commonly seen error would be to say the limit of xn minus x is the limit of xn minus x. On the left we know that's 0 and therefore the limit of xn is x. But breaking up the limit of the difference into a difference, that first line there, that's using proposition 2.2.5 part 1, requires knowing that all the individual limits exist, and we don't know that the limit of xn exists yet. That's what we are trying to prove. So we cannot distribute the limit across the difference because we don't know that the limit of xn even exists yet. It's a very minor mistake, and it's, it's one that can be easily fixed, and we'll go over how to do it, but I see it a lot, and it is a mistake, and the whole point of a course like this is to be very careful in applying all of these theorems. If you wish to break a limit into pieces based on a sum or a product or a quotient, whatever, you can't do it unless you already know in advance that all of the pieces you're going to write down exist as limits. So how do you fix this error? We know that the limit as n approaches infinity of xn minus x is 0. And we also know that constant sequences have limits. So if I took the constant x and took its limit, that would just be x. Now I have two sequences that I know have limits. xn minus x converges to 0 and x converges to x. So we can use proposition 2.2.5 now to add these limits together. The first limit plus the second, we know they both exist, therefore that is the limit as n approaches infinity of xn minus x plus x. Now on the left we have a 0 because we know the limit of xn minus x is 0, and we also know the limit of a constant is just that constant, and on the right, inside parentheses, we can cancel the x's, and now we have our desired conclusion, the limit of xn equals x. The point of this problem, the reason I made a whole video about it, is to point out that little error. It's one that can be fixed in this instance, but you have to be careful. Do not use these limit laws of sequences to break limits apart if you don't already know that the individual limits exist. Typically, you get around that problem in a way like this. You take what you want the result to be, and instead of, for example, breaking up a limit of a difference because you don't know the pieces exist, you add in the limit you know works to cancel out the term you want to get rid of. So just be careful about that when working with these limit laws. You cannot use the limit laws to break a limit apart unless you already know the pieces exist.